Well, when I have an idea for a story, uh, it's, it's just always a story from the beginning. I, um, to, when I decide to, when something's going to be a novel, I mean, I have really set out to write it as a novel. It's really different impulses. A story for me, uh, often I'll just be writing longhand. I'll have a little idea. Um, and uh, you know, and uh, and it's kind of already complete in my head, or or I'm or I'm just experimenting, and eventually it becomes what will be a story. But when I'm writing a novel, it's much more predetermined as a novel. You know, it's uh, I I have friends who are short story writers and who um, you know who have written novels, and many of them have said that, oh, they began something as a story, but it got more and more complicated and kept going on and became bigger and bigger until it became a novel. That's never been the case for me. But I, I'm not, I don't really consider myself to be a short story writer. I, uh, I sometimes just have an inspiration for something that will not really be a poem or be a prose poem, but have some narrative, but, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's not, you know, it doesn't really conform to most of the traditions, I guess, of short stories, although I love short stories and admire them. So it's just very different. When, I, when I'm having an idea, when I sit down to write a novel, um, I already, you know, I already know it's big. I already know that they're, you know, it's going to cover a period of time or they're going to be a number of conflicts and that it's that it's uh, not something that could you know be done in 12 pages or two pages or three pages well I think family life and the suburbs and the state I live in Michigan um, that's my material so I feel it's kind of fun to try to make it interesting <laughs> so I, I think it uh, I think that um, maybe it's been good for me as a writer to live somewhere um, where the uh, drama is not taking place on the street and, you know, and with some not New York City and there's not, you know, you know, things aren't very out in the open, but that they're the dramas are domestic and they're taking place behind closed doors and in a small space um, it, um, because uh, I just I find that I find that making that sort of situation which could otherwise seem very banal make it um, eerie or interesting I think I feel it is often eerie and interesting and that you know even small town uh, stories uh, can be full of uh, tr serious horror and you know like Greek tragedies but it, I don't know set it set in um, ordinary places I, I enjoy writing that way but um, I would say that it's not again a choice that I set out that I would always be writing about these towns it's just where I live it's what I see and also I'm a, my writing is very much um, inspired by you know I get my ideas for things just by the physical world and those you know seasons and you know things that I see on a daily basis so um, and so it's more you know I'm more describing what I'm seeing and feeling and hearing and interactions I'm having than imagining things. But of course, like the imagination part is often the, the plot, the, you know, the bigger um, part of the story. Well, I do write quickly, uh, first drafts anyway, um, and very much through association, for me, when I'm writing, it's just sort of the same as thinking or even dreaming, but putting it in words at the same time. 
and uh, no, I never go back and add metaphors or even really sensory detail. I instead, actually, that my editing process is more that, you know, I write and write and write and write and write, and then I have to go out and I have to go back and cut things out because it's too much, <laughs> you know. There's, uh, writing doesn't always, for me, come really easily and just flow like that. Um, so uh, when I am writing, when I feel good about the process of writing, I'm, you know, it, just the ideas come to me as I'm writing. They're not things that I've necessarily thought about beforehand or, you know, I don't, with novels I've written, sometimes I try to write an outline beforehand and then I just lose the outline or the outline is uh, totally useless. I, I figure it out usually as I'm writing. Well, I think that I, uh, it comes from my family. My, I had a, a very superstitious mother, very, very superstitious grandmother. Um, I was an only child. My mother was an only child. Uh, my f um, grandfather had uh, several sisters, none of whom ever had children. So I was, you know, the I was the child, and um, I was always I was around adults a lot, and um, and these superstitious women who um, talked all the time about. Uh, I, I mean, I think they really believed in ghosts and, and you know, sometimes I tell stories uh, that to me are very, you know, they're just memories and don't seem that strange, but of things that my mother said or did when, that I remember when I was little and my husband, I'll tell my husband and my husband will say, Laura, your mother was crazy, <laughs> you know, because she did, uh, I, but I, I'm, I'm grateful for it in a way because it was a good kind of crazy. It gave me, um, uh, it gave me this interest in the supernatural, which I think is, uh, is it, I don't know, it adds an, an extra element of interest to life. Um, I've told this story before, one of my very, you know, the first uh, experiences I had both of maybe something being supernatural, but also realizing that my mother and grandmother were um, different maybe from other people is uh, I, I thought I, in, as an adult, I have never seen a ghost. I would like to, I think. I, I can keep waiting. Where's the ghosts? <laughs> I want them to come. <laughs> but I guess, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't, maybe. But um, when I was uh, five years old or so, I don't know why, but our grandmother, my grandmother was staying with us. And I woke up, or I thought, I, so I thought I was awake, but I was dreaming, obviously. So I looked into the threshold of my bedroom and I saw an old hag in the d threshold. She had long, long gray hair and a horrible face and was wearing a white gown. And it was, she was, it looked like she was zipping by, but then she saw me and I saw her and she looked at me and she just, she, uh, you know, came running at me and jumped and jumped on my bed. And then I woke up. <laughs> so I, but I felt, you know, it's it that vivid dream. I felt it. And I, I was five years old. I started screaming. And my mother and grandmother came in to see what was wrong. I told them I saw this, you know, old hag in the threshold. She came running at me. And um, my mother said, I'll never forget it, my mother said, I always thought this house was haunted. <laughs> and now, now, as an adult, I realize if a child has seen, has had probably, has seen something like that, you say, sweetheart, you were just dreaming. <laughs> the house isn't haunted. Instead, it was the opposite. I said, no, mom, you know, it was just a dream. <laughs> but, but, and then I would hear, they would, all my aunts would talk about this too, about how I had seen the old hag and that there, the house was haunted. And so, I mean, I was in, 
I was uh, exposed to this idea of the spirit world and ghosts and I was also skeptical about it from a very young age so you know uh, otherwise maybe I'd be a psychic now and <laughs> It's so hard to answer because <clears throat> I read a lot and ha I go through phases, um, it, you know, become very attached to certain writers uh, and then forget about them, move on to others that are really inf influences on me. I, I do think, though, that um, s uh, s some things that have stayed with me forever. I mean, I always mention Virginia Woolf and Mrs. Dalloway, which I'm not making it up. I have a copy of Mrs. Dalloway, um, the nicest, most expensive copy of it. I don't have a first edition or anything, but the, you know, the prettiest copy I could get at a bookstore. Um, uh, and, and I look at it every day just to remind myself how, what pro, prose can do that, I mean, th that book was such an epiphany to me um, because, well, I, had, I started out as a poet and I thought, uh, really, until I read that book, although I'd read lots of, you know, uh, fiction that it was very lyrical and poetic, um, until I read Mrs. Dalloway, I always thought that for, for that, that sense of really being in some in a consciousness, and um, you know, for a consciousness to be able to you know reach everything and uh, to to evoke that kind of experience for the reader. I thought that's what poetry was for, and you never found that in prose. And then I then I read that, and I thought, oh, yeah, the prose can do that too. So that was really inspiring too. But I think also <clears throat> the um, in, in, when I was in college, I think the, about the only books that I ever kept, have kept all these years from the, then were from a class I took with a brilliant woman who's just now retiring. She's, I'm lucky she's become my colleague now, but she's just now retiring. Her name's Cindy Sowers, and um, just a uh, really brilliant, just has read everything and, uh, and thought really hard of connecting books and or, you know, novels to poems and poems to paintings and paintings to music and all of this to history. And she t taught several classes that I took that just you know, brought everything into it. And I, in high school, I you know, read, I believe I read The Odyssey and probably was exposed to s some Dante, but I never, I, I, her, her passion for this, um, you know, has never left me. I mean, the, it's that's I explain it this way because otherwise I just feel foolish saying, oh, you know, Dante's Inferno has had a huge influence on me because I mean, you know, anybody who's read it, it's had a huge influence on. But she, ju uh, you know brought it to me and taught it to us in this way that really was life-changing and um, so that and uh, we read the Aeneid and we read all, all the classics but she also put it in context you know uh, with modern literature as well and so we would read and um, you know T we would read Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock and then we would read a section of Dante's Inferno and we and you know she just put all these things together for me I don't I don't think I would have been a right I might have I'd have still written but maybe not quite as not very well if it hadn't been for her